Let's get right into it. Number 10. The mandatory time out. You're lying there on the operating table, counting backwards from 100. The surgeon and their team are all ready to go, but then everything stops. Everyone in the room freezes like they're playing a game of surgical statue. This isn't because someone dropped a scalpel or saw a spider. It's actually a required safety step called the time out. This rule exists because of some horrifying mistakes, like when a surgeon operated on the wrong knee or when another doctor removed the wrong kidney. In 2013, a surgeon in Tennessee operated on the wrong baby. The baby needed surgery on his tongue. Instead, they operated on a completely different baby who just needed a routine checkup. Before any surgery starts, the whole team has to stop everything. They check three things, who you are, what they're doing, and where they're doing it. Some hospitals make their surgeons write yes on the correct body part and no on the opposite side. This simple pause has prevented thousands of mistakes. It's the difference between waking up with the right number of kidneys or becoming another horror story. Number 9. The Sponge Census Surgeons leave about 11 sponges inside patients every day in America alone. That's roughly 4,000 forgotten sponges per year hanging out in people's bodies like unwanted house guests. These surgical sponges are cotton squares that soak up blood during surgery, and they're really good at playing hide-and-seek inside people's bodies. Once inside, these sponges start causing all sorts of drama. They can cause infections, create holes in organs, or just sit there for years making the patient feel like garbage. Sometimes the body tries to wall off the sponge, creating what doctors call a gossip paboma. That's doctor speak for, we left something inside you. These sponges are masters of camouflage. They can blend in with normal tissue on x-rays, even with their built-in radio-opaque strips. That's why hospitals have the sponge census. Every single sponge is counted before surgery starts, then during surgery, then before closing up, and one more time after everything's done. But here's the truly terrifying part. In up to 76% of cases where a sponge was left behind, the final count was reported as correct. Number 8. The Tourniquet's Dark Bargain A tourniquet is one of the darkest deals in emergency medicine. When someone comes in with a severely bleeding leg, stopping the blood with a tourniquet might save their life, but sacrifice their limb. When you apply a tourniquet, you're playing a game of chicken with time. Cut off blood flow for too long, and the tissue starts dying. The cells starve for oxygen, nerves get damaged, and muscles turn to mush. Doctors live by the rule, life over limb. Because sometimes you have to choose between letting someone keep their leg or letting them keep breathing. Once that tourniquet goes on, there's a clock ticking. After about two hours, the chances of saving the limb start dropping fast. After six hours, most surgeons are reaching for their saws. During World War I, soldiers would loosen their tourniquets periodically, thinking they were letting blood flow back to save the limb. This mistake killed many of them, as dead tissue and toxins flooded back into their system. Today the rule is simple but brutal. Once it's on, it stays on, because a blue limb is better than a dead patient. Number 7. The Grapefruit Rule Inside your gut, there's an enzyme called CYP3A4. Think of this enzyme as a bouncer at a club, controlling how much of a drug gets into your bloodstream. But grapefruit is like that friend who distracts the bouncer, letting way too many people into the club. When you eat grapefruit, compounds called furanocoumarins knock out your enzyme bouncer. Now your medication is having a wild party in your blood, with no one controlling the guest list. One grapefruit can make it feel like you've taken multiple pills instead of just one. This effect can last up to 72 hours. Even if you had grapefruit for breakfast on Monday, it could still mess with the pill you take on Wednesday. With cholesterol medication, this interaction can turn your muscles into jelly. Your muscle tissue breaks down and clogs up your kidneys. It's like trying to strain spaghetti with a paper towel. Scientists discovered this by complete accident in the late 1980s. They were testing how alcohol interacted with a blood pressure drug and used grapefruit juice just to mask the taste. They were stunned to find the grapefruit juice was the real culprit and it was making the drug's concentration skyrocket. Grapefruit can mess with over 85 different medications. It's the ultimate party crasher of the fruit world. Number 6. Don't shock a flatline. In real life, doctors never shock a flatline. A defibrillator isn't a magical restart the heart machine. It's more like hitting the reset button when your heart's electrical system goes haywire. Your heart is like a room full of people doing a line dance. When everyone's dancing in sync, that's your normal heartbeat. Sometimes the dancers get out of sync and start dancing randomly. That's what doctors call ventricular fibrillation. The defibrillator is like turning off the music for a second. 
so everyone can start dancing together again. But when there's a flat line, it means there's no dancing at all. The room is empty. Shocking an empty room isn't going to make dancers suddenly appear. Shocking a flat-lined heart is like throwing water on a car that's run out of gas. What really saves people in these situations is CPR and carefully chosen drugs. This Hollywood myth has become so widespread that doctors have to explain to families why they're not shocking their flatlined loved ones. Number 5. The Maggot Makeover These aren't your regular trash can maggots. These are medical-grade maggots, raised in sterile conditions cleaner than your average hospital room. Think of them like tiny surgeons, but instead of scalpels, they use their own special spit. These little guys secrete enzymes that turn dead tissue into a smoothie, which they then slurp up like it's a five-star meal. They only eat the dead stuff, like hundreds of microscopic food critics that can tell exactly which tissue is fresh and which has gone bad. Their secretions defeat the superbugs that our most powerful drugs can't handle. Doctors noticed this working on battlefields during World War I. Soldiers with maggot-infested wounds were actually surviving better than those without them. The maggots were nature's cleanup crew showing up uninvited, but doing a fantastic job. Today, doctors use special dressings to keep the maggots contained, like a tiny prison for helpful inmates. They stay in there for about 48 to 72 hours, having their all-you-can-eat buffet of dead tissue. The FDA actually classifies medical maggots as a medical device. Number 4. Freeze you to save you. When your heart stops beating, doctors might turn you into a human popsicle. They're not preparing you for some sci-fi future. They're trying to save your brain. When your heart stops, your brain starts dying within minutes. But doctors found that cooling your body to 91 degrees Fahrenheit puts your brain into hibernation mode. It's like putting your laptop in sleep mode instead of letting it overheat and crash. This cooling gives doctors extra time to fix whatever made your heart stop. In Norway, a woman was found frozen in the snow. Her body temperature was 56.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Everyone thought she was dead. But after they warmed her up slowly, she woke up completely fine. She became known as the Ice Woman in medical journals. Doctors use special cooling blankets to bring your temperature down. Your body fights against being cold, so they give you medicine to stop you from shivering. They keep you cool for 24 hours, during which your brain uses 40% less oxygen than usual. Then they warm you up slowly, half a degree per hour. Number 3. The Dead Donor Rule the dead donor rule forces doctors into an impossible race against time. Doctors can't take organs from someone until they're officially dead. But organs are like fresh produce, with an extremely short shelf life once the body stops working. The heart, for example, needs to be transplanted within four to six hours. So doctors are stuck waiting until someone is officially dead, then racing to get the organs while they're still viable. Modern medicine made this even more complicated. We can keep bodies functioning with machines even when the brain is completely gone. It's like when your computer's CPU is fried but the fan is still running. This rule exists to prevent doctors from declaring death too early just because someone's organs could save others. But this creates an intense situation. When families agree to donate organs, the transplant team stands in full surgical gear, watching the clock. It's the only scenario where doctors hope for someone to die faster. For the most ethical reason possible, transplant surgeons walk this tightrope between waiting long enough to confirm death, but not so long that the organs become unusable. Number 2. The Hiccup Threshold Most hiccups are just your diaphragm having a little temper tantrum, like your breathing muscle decided to start breakdancing without asking you first. But doctors have a strict 48-hour rule about hiccups, and there's a dark reason behind it. When hiccups stick around for more than 48 hours, it could mean something seriously wrong. These persistent hiccups are your body's way of waving a red flag, signaling things like tumors pressing on nerves or even an unnoticed stroke happening right now. A man once came into the emergency room with hiccups that lasted three days. He wasn't just having annoying hiccups. He was having a heart attack. His hiccups were literally his heart's way of screaming for help. So if your hiccups hit that 48-hour mark, skip the home remedies and head straight to the doctor. Because sometimes, a hiccup isn't just a hiccup. It's your body's version of a fire alarm. Number 1. Why doctors refuse to treat family For more than a century, the medical profession has recognized a disturbing trend. When doctors treated their own family members, they kept making massive mistakes. They would miss obvious symptoms because they were in denial about their loved ones being seriously ill. Or they would do way too many tests because they were paranoid about missing something. Doctors who treat family members often end up lying on medical records. 
They write prescriptions without proper documentation. They order tests without recording why. Some even prescribe controlled substances to family members. When doctors treat family, they sometimes ignore obvious signs of abuse or addiction. When it comes to family, even the most brilliant doctors turn into worried humans who make terrible decisions. And in medicine, terrible decisions cost lives. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.